or put the kettle on. I bet you were wondering what the hell is the Tell Strange Show? It's mostly waffling about the things that we probably don't know. Come here to join us and see where this random chit chat goes. All aboard from the Tell Strange Show. Oh, lovely cup of tea. Thank you. Hey! All right. Well, should we do a round of applause? We never do that, do we? Yay! Oh, hey. yeah. But we always start with, hey! Oh, no, it's, it's a habit now, but we, we've got to carry on doing it. Yeah, so welcome to what? Episode eight? Seven. Eight? Seven? Seven. seven. No, it's eight. It's eight. Oh, eight. it says seven on here, Ads. Oh. Nice. Oh, well, we can I'm change not, that after. That. Don't right. worry about it. So welcome this... to episode eight of The Toast Train with me, Rob Jones, and... Me, Amy Templey. Hey, uh, thank you very much for joining us this evening. Um, it's a pretty mega show, actually. What is going on? I'm looking forward to this one. So, he is 66 years old, uh, a working psychic medium, ex-bouncer, and has <laughs> a best-selling book called Medium Rare. Which is the best book name ever. Ever. Um, right, he is married to Rob's sister, Nikki, who, when you got married, didn't she just have the most beautiful wedding dress that you've ever seen of all she time? She did. She did. Whose fault was that? Rob's. Mine. Oh, was it you? Yeah. Oh, I didn't right. design it. Yeah. I got a <laughs> No, very dress. good. No, very uh, right, so you are a, a Braintree local. Yeah. Uh, you've been on numerous TV shows, including Big Brother. Yeah. Correctly predicting the winner, Katie Lawler. Yeah. Not you've... as a housemate, then. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not as a housemate. Oh, my God. Me. That would be amazing. Um, you've worked overseas and you did a show um, in Denmark. Yeah, for class on TV. Amazing. Yeah. The most watched programme that year in Denmark, evidently. That's fantastic. Yeah. Um, an ex-criminal. Yeah, it was bad, a bad boy. boy. Years ago, yeah. yeah, um, yeah. But we'll you, get into you, that. you're an East Londoner. Uh, that's where you hail from, but you're now up here. Yeah, Hackney, yeah. Yeah, living out this way for a few years now. Lived in a lot of places. Well, oh. we're going to get right into it, I reckon. Right. Also, we've got, uh, as usual, lots of music and uh, new artists and stuff coming up as well. So we're going to throw it over to Ad to see what's coming up. Well, we've got a lot going on in the show tonight, guys. We've got music from Sandman, uh, also music from Paper Fight, and following up with uh, music from Nathan Thomas, too. Uh, later on in the show, we've, of course, got uh, Ronnie's guest toast, uh, Amy's guessing tonight's true or false, and an insight into Ronnie Buckingham's spirit walks. That's all to come on the toast train. Lovely job. Hey. Are we Fantastic. back? Fantastic. Are we back? You are. We're back. All right, we can Fabulous. Stop. So well, that's all the... Faff out the way, Ron. Right. So, uh, for people that have no idea who you are, uh, we've, we've kind of already given a bio. Yeah. But uh, tell us, tell us what you're what you're about, mate. Where did it all begin? Yeah, well, basically, I mean, my, my career is my profession is being a medium. So, basically, what I try not in do... t-shirts. Nah, <laughs> no, I'm an extra extra large in t-shirts. You can see little fat <laughs> bastards. But no, get under the head in a medium, and I'm an extra large. But no, so really, what my job is to prove life after death. Really, to bring people prove that there's another world there's another existence and their loved ones live on and you do that by telling people things that they know you couldn't know yeah you know and i'm always looking for the the curious the things where people go and say how would he have known that how would he have done that how would he have known that so that's it's just it really i mean i'm not much into fortune telling but yeah i love what i do and uh, yeah i've got a very very big following been going for a lot of years 20 odd years now so i think that's the problem with uh that craft, I can imagine, like there's a lot of uh, stereotype around it, you know, like Mystic Meg and all that sort of stuff. Oh, you there's know, some nonsense. Must I mean, it. seriously, there's some terrible, terrible mediums out there, you know. And unfortunately, some of the big names are some of the worst. Not mentioning any, but people who have seen a certain person that's about thirty quid a ticket. Yeah. Uh, Is that because they're doing the whole like smoke and mirrors and like all the smoke machines and like all the lights and it, you know, they're well, kind of dressing it up a bit, aren't look, they? Look, you know, in truth, anyone has seen me work. Knows I was just very matter of fact. I often blind a little bit. That's my way. You know, I talk like that in everyday life, and that's how I do messages. Just it should be, it should just be plain and simple facts. You know, this is how they died. This is what their name was. Blah blah blah, and, and looking for things. But you know, it's blowing up out of all proportion. It's too much. I don't know. If you want to put it like they play it up a little bit. You know, like. Yeah. like one certain meeting when kids come through she talks like a fucking kid you know oh mummy here i am mummy it's nonsense oh, don't do that. yeah and you see the thing is they if you're a only... parent if you're a parent jesus christ and you have gone Someone's through that extraordinary pain of losing a child the worst pain you can't you, 
it's just pulling on the heartstrings a little yeah. too a little too hard. I yeah. mean, I mean, I can't, I can't, cannot put myself in the position of having lost a child. I'm incredibly lucky that my toddler terrorises me every day. But if I lost him and I went to a medium and then he was, they were he, she, whatever, were were putting on a voice of him, I, I just. I can't imagine what that would mm. do. There's no I need can't for, there's imagine no, there's what no that would do. I mean, it would just kill you. It would how just do, kill you. How does how does some of the, like the the big names, if you like, the big TV ones and all that sort of stuff? How do they get to that position? Like, if they are bullshit, if you know what I mean, because like, surely at some point they've got to actually prove in a way that they can do the do it. Because if they didn't know how to, if you know what I mean, uh, how? Would yeah, they... but I suppose the difference is that you are either a medium. Or you are somebody who is incredibly skilled at reading people. But you've still got to get the facts, haven't you? Mm, yeah. yeah, but do you? Do you? Or could you be that good? So could how, you be like Darren Brown level yeah. amazing at your craft that you can wing your way through? I mean, you know, if you're talking about people, let's say you you. Your great grandmother. Now you know that your great grandmother is going to have been born in this time period. So she's going to be born around the turn of the century. Now we know there aren't any women that were born in 1903 called Sharon, you know? So somebody who does their homework and somebody who is expert at reading people and has been doing it for so long and have so much smoke blown up their ass. Yeah, that's the difference between what one does, though, because he doesn't do any of that. Well, exactly. That's my point. So those people that you're talking about are that good Mm. at reading people and reading a situation and reading the style. See, I I think... Darren Brown, I think he's actually a psychic, a very good psychic, a very good medium, but he makes more money out of not being a medium. Yeah, do you yeah. see what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, there's some... I mean, a few of them have passed over, and I don't want to, you know, but it was like... Derek, don't want to talk to them now. Well, no, but it was like Derek O'Connor and Sam. You know, there's no need to do that. What's this mm-hmm. Sam? What's that Sam? I'm not going to knock the man. You know, he had a following. Some people say he was very good, but there's no need for it. And Because I find your method to watch far more... Um, Real, like engaging, like you know, mm-hmm. instead of like coming out in a cape and all that shit. Like you, oh, you literally, no you, you go like. Oh, right, don't get me wrong. You go, Ron, I'd love to see you in a cape. You go, <laughs> you go. Right, I've got someone here. This is the name. This is it. There's no like guessing. This is it. And if if it ain't for you, it's someone else in the room. Yeah, right? yeah. I, I always stick by what I say. I mean, luckily enough, I've got a big following. Lots and lots of people have seen me over many years. Um, I've had great honours given to me. You know, with a little Jake Russell, the parson of Jake. God bless him. Um, I'm now godfather to his brother that I predicted. Right. Um, I've had a star named after me by Nicky and Alan Russell. Uh, I've got a massive, massive following. And I, I think I'm a bit marmite. You know, people either really love the work or they don't. And the problem with mediumship today, in my my mind, it's gone a little bit uh, modern, a little bit, you know, it's a little bit theatrical now. Mm. And uh, there's a way of putting things and it's all about angels and... This and that, and, and fashion. It's, it's fashionable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's it's gone beyond me. I've always, Lynn, who, who, who sort of schooled me through the early years. You had to keep everything basic. You didn't throw in guesses, you know, and, yeah. and you worked clean. And you know, can I say, hand on heart, that every reading I've ever given has been absolutely one hundred percent. Of course not, but I think ninety ninety five percent of my record says that. And that's the thing about you, the book. But you never fish for answers, do you? you no. You don't go like, oh, I've, it begins with J, 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 and then someone feeding it to you. Oh, really? You always, really? Whenever so- I've seen you, you go, his name's Dave or whatever. Yeah, like yeah. yeah sometimes on. you do get an initial. I mean, what people don't understand is different spirits can work to different levels. They don't all work <coughs> off the same level. So, I mean, you know, Amy, you're a big, big personality. <coughs> so if you, please God, it's for a long, long time. But when you come across, you'll bring that sense of personality <coughs> with you. You're a great communicator in life. Oh, thank if you very so- much. No, you are. <coughs> but if someone in life was a very shy, sort of drawn-back, reclusive mm-hmm. person, that's how they come through. So it's a little mm-hmm. bit harder to engage with them. And if you see me do shows, it's always characters that I get on better with. Mm-hmm. And I honestly believe that certain spirits will come through to me because they like my doubt and out personality mm-hmm. because I'm going to say it as it was. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, and I, I say this to people, when you pass across the spirit, you take your personality with you. So if you was a real arsehole... So I'm going to be an arsehole over there as well then, basically. Probably. Yeah, but you'll Probably. be so handsome when you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, I mean, 
uh, it's about giving proof. So if you're going to someone, well, I've got your daddy here, and we're assuming that all dads are lovely people, what a nice man, and say, well, actually, he used to beat me mum up and kick the dog, mm. they'd deny it was their dad. But I would know that. Mm -hmm. When the spirit mm. comes through, I can feel what they were like. Mm -hmm. and they bring so back so the person. spirits don't hold back any details of how they were to you, then, or anything like that? Occasionally. As in, if they did something it, pretty it, sinister, it they, they wouldn't long. give it up. Occasionally, a suicide will come through and say they passed in another way. But they can't keep that up because... My greatest asset is what they call clairsentience. So a spirit comes so close to me that I can feel what they were like. And in the end, I begin to feel the depression. I go, hold on a minute, this was that. Mm -hmm. And they give you the feelings of their part and the feelings of their personality. So do you think the um, that there are a lot of sceptics because of all the pizzazz mediums and they've kind of ruined it for people that really do have... The skills, like, do you know what I mean? Like, or, well, or don't ta you've got to also take into consideration that there may be skeptics who, who, who don't believe the science because they're super into the science of it. Mm. Because we, you know, we've got no hard proof that. But surely that there's exists. science that we don't know about as well. With oh, how the brain God. works. Yeah, and stuff yeah, like for that. sure. I've said, I've said many times, millions of millions of people have claimed to see, claimed to see ghosts over millions of years, thousands of years. They can't all be wrong. You know, mathematics, science must say that. If you've got millions of millions of people say, I have seen a ghost, they can't all be wrong. And if just one of those millions is right and there has seen a ghost, then there's an afterlife. Mm -hmm. but is that the same for, like, religion, though? Because obviously people believe in all that as well. Like, if if you do and if you don't, it's up to you. But do you know what I mean? Like obviously, because there's so many people have said Jesus, God and Allah and all of that, like, does that well, make it the same sort of ballpark? You see, really, I want people to understand this, it says... There's not a man that is a god. There's no man. Jesus, oh, sorry, God isn't a man. Allah wasn't a man. They're, it's all one energy. It's a spiritual energy from which everything flows. And this is why I always laugh when people say, oh, there's black magic and there's white magic and there's healing and there's cursing. It's all the same energy. People can't get their head around that, but it is. It's a greater energy from which everything flows. Mm -hmm. Now, if you liken it to electricity, <clears throat> you can plug electricity into an incubator and save a baby's life. Or put it into an iron lung, save someone's life. Or you can put it into an electric chair and take someone's life. Electricity won't go, fuck that, I ain't going there to kill him. Yeah, yeah. Electricity will go, well, look, it's up to you. You pull the switch, I'll kill him. It's your choice. You make the choice. And if you decide that's what you're going to do, I'll do it for you. But the conscience lays, you know, it's your, mm -hmm. it's, it's up to you. Your conscience lays with you. And the same thing. So it's, it's a manipulation of energy. But of course, different races, different beliefs, you know, you've got so many religions out there and they all counteract each other. Yeah. But the same basic... And does that ruin business. it, though, a bit, do you think, where it's just getting so filtered everywhere that it's well, hard to know I, what is... is I know what? that religion, especially the... Well, most religions are against what I do, or they're against mediums. Mm. But to me... But I, both religion and what you do are based on hope a bit as well. Like, you give hope to people with these messages, and religion is a bit of hope, you know, go somewhere where you die and stuff, and you're kind of affirming that there is something after. Oh, 100%. 100%. But w with religion, it, it, it's almost... that. You can't speak to the dead. They're dead, that's gone. And if you was a bad person, you go to hell. And if you was a good person, you go to heaven. Well, it's not like that. There's different stages of the spirit world. Nasty bits of work are down the lower realms. The better you are, the higher you'll go. So they all get in then? Um, yeah, into somewhere. But don't get me wrong. You're going to get a murderer and people like that, rapists, nasty bits of work. They're not going to go to the same level as decent people. Yeah. You understand, it's like having a hotel where downstairs is... They're not in business class. Yeah, no. it's, it's basic, you know, it's just hard seats, no heating, no windows. Then you go to the next level and so it goes on and on and on and progresses and gets more and more beautiful. What sort of people are in the top tier then? Like, what are they, you know, the VIP lounge? What, 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 me? What? No, no, I'm joking <laughs> one side. Um, it would be people that have been good people. And what people have got to realise is you live, you don't live one life, you live loads of lives. You come back... And from where you leave off this life, you take on the next life. So you'll go through everything. So it's kind of a nirvana situation. Exactly. Can, yeah. you, can, you you can you get a spirit? Can you get a spirit that's on this sort of multiple lives thing? Do you ever get like a spirit come through that's, he, you know, in the last life he was Joe Bloggs, but also you can tell that he was something else before that form? Yeah. Does that like, energy uh, come through them? No, through I've, their I've, lives? I've, I won't lie. I've, I've never had that. I've never had a, a spirit come through and tell me that he was. Something yeah, because obviously you would have to work on the assumption that that, that person would have known that. Yes. Mm. But, of course, that would be a bit of a mind-blowing thing, thing to is, accept. And this is what some people do. They go into this aspect of it, but because you don't know if they're getting it right or not. It's like you said. I, I know there was a medium years ago when I used to serve the churches. I'm not going to mention where well, the man's passed over now. So, 
Um, he was a terrible medium. He ran a certain church that I went to, but he was terrible. And he only ever worked with great grandparents oh, that's or great great handy. aunts. Mm. Yeah. So when he was given a message, the person would go, oh, "Okay." Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Somebody that no I didn't know, and, no and they were well, you, they were you, all called surely people, Victoria. Surely people will go into them because they've lost their recent someone. You know, not someone that they. No, never no, met. no. We're talking about demonstrations of mediumship. Ah, right, That's okay. the difference. Like private reading, he wouldn't get away with that. I don't think he did. Um, well, it wouldn't last long if he did. I mean, mm. you know, there's there's a lot of psychics out there, but very few have got long waiting lists. You can some ring up some today and see them tomorrow. Where it's always where it should be word of mouth that that, that passes on. But no. Um, in the spiritualist churches, there's some good mediums and there's some very poor mediums, sadly. I'm not going to knock this. I, I worked in them for 10 years um, and I met some very good mediums and I saw some very, very bad ones. There is no sort of regulation. Does it bore your blood a bit, though, if they are taking the piss or, or whatever? No, some of them don't. It's not that they're taking the piss. They, I think they, they kid themselves that they're talking to the other side. But they don't They don't have the gift? No. Right. Or it, there's a. But that's what I'm saying, don't you? Doesn't that it, like, annoy you, know, you that you can see uh, through it? Sort of thing? It's like you've been able to play guitar and someone else playing three notes and say he can, he can play guitar. Do, do you see what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. He, he's not a problem. And they're the ones that are getting the chance. <laughs> you got it. But um, no, and, and, uh, there's certain things that you see mediums say. I mean, I've seen many mediums say, they'd be talk, giving out a message and they say to someone, um, I can give you the months of February, May. Maybe November, December for birthdays, passing, or anniversaries. Yeah. I've heard that you. God, so then you got times. a one out of twelve mm. chance. Well, it, and it, someone's going to put their hand up. So if you're, any day, yeah. any month, for anyone, anyone, yeah. Yeah. they'll think of something that that month. Exactly, exactly. And of course, then you've got is there a George and an old lady drinking Guinness and. Mm -hmm. uh, so before we before we dive into this <laughs> part of it, like yeah. for people who are watching now and going, I'm not, I'm not sold or whatever. So how how does it work for you? How does it actually happen like what's the process what's the well what's the thing yeah there's all different sorts of so when you wake up in the morning how does it all start like what happens like, how does it work for your body like how do you turn do it you on know, I think what no, rob, no. rob might be asking is do you have to get yourself in a particular mindset do no. you have to be in a particular space no. or can you be walking through tesco's and go bloody hell hang on a minute well in the book there's a here. few stories there you know i just want to know your your mechanics of it, just, how it starts, no how it I, do you know i'm just an everyday fellow i get up in the morning normally go to the gym have a bit of breakfast do whatever i do fuck about around the house ride my motorbikes and, and sort of stuff like that and actually when i go to do a show so how do you switch it on i mean what do you have to do like it's just the mind and then how does it work it's, it's quick. I can go from normal to medium in seconds. It's just a... So talk us through, like, that process. What happens to you? Well, you open up, basically. You just... It's like trying a switch. You open up. It's very hard to explain. And then if there's a spirit near to you, first thing I do is I feel it. I feel that spirit. I, I feel Emotionally or physically? Physically. Oh, OK. And I, I, I thought, well, I've got a man here. It's very nice. for You know, that type of thing. What, like somebody <laughs> invading your space a little yeah. bit? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then it's almost like having a television set inside okay. your head and they're running pictures and, and things by you you don't actually hear a lot and that's why when i'm doing shows you'll hear me say the only time i'll ask someone a question is if they shout a name at me because i don't hear enough for them to say i am her dad my name's peter i'll just hear the name peter shout who's peter and so that is my dad or it's his brother apart from that, everything it's a statement so if i said oh did your dad have cancer i'm saying, i believe your dad had cancer was he a tall man i believe he was you know the way it goes and then they just answer yes or no to let you know you're on track but you never, I've, I've seen your shows and you never kind of give them options to feed an answer. Like you, you, what's so impressive is you do go, right, I've got this man or woman oh, here. Yeah, because this is it, what they look like. You've got ginger hair. Like, oh, and, and you, you, you already describe it before you're asking if he had ginger or brown hair. Oh, like, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it, it can't be wrong because you always do the, there's always a, when you're going to give a message in a show, I'll go, right, I've got a man here, I feel that I'm in my 60s, I feel that I'm quite a stocky-built man. You're describing yourself, Ronnie. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Not balding on top and fat. <laughs> oh, I love I'm on show. a podcast. <laughs> yeah, but no. Um, uh, and then you start, you might hear a name. So you say, look, this could be his name. If it's not, it's very someone close to him, maybe a brother. This man's telling me he had three children, two boys and a girl. He died on a midweek, maybe around a Wednesday time. And then someone will go, yeah, that's my dad or that's whoever. And then you just roll on from there. I mean, and um, often you get people don't put their hand up or this one says, I go, no, it's not for you. This is not for you. If you can't take that, if you yeah. can't say that your dad was short, this is not your dad. Yeah. yeah. And then someone else eventually goes, you're with me. Because there's a lot of fear in it. You know, a lot of people don't want to put their hand up. Mm -hmm. That type of thing. Mm. And um, so they're, they're, they're there at the show because obviously to see you do your thing, but obviously mm. most people are there 
Because they've lost someone, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, or they just want to believe there's something else. Yeah. And that's the nice thing. Or they're bit. interested. And it's... the nice thing is, one of my nice compliments is people saying to me, although there was no message for me, I thoroughly enjoyed the night. It just, you know, blew me away. Because before, before, before I met you, um, I was a bit of a sceptic, you know, like I'm very much a science geezer and all that stuff. Yeah, but yeah, like yeah. having seen you and known you for so many years, like there's just no way that, you know, especially like because you've, some of the friends and stuff that I know you've spoke to and stuff and the facts that you've drawn out of them and that even they didn't know and they've yeah. researched and found out that things are true. Obviously, mm. that's obviously definitely put me in the I'm convinced crowd, you know. Yeah, how yeah. would how would you... Because I think, Amy, you're you're probably not so convinced of this as a general thing. So how, how would you go about showing those sort of people, like... I don't know. I, I mean, think but you don't, I could read Amy privately and tell her yeah. things that she knows you wouldn't know, I wouldn't know, only she would know. Uh, and, and her loved ones would know. And mm -hmm. that's what you've got to look for. You've, I'm always asking them on the other side, tell me something that it couldn't be guessed. It couldn't go. And, uh, yeah. you know, a lot it's of people like Because you, you can't you, Google certain things and all that. You know what never I mean? have. So, never yeah. have. I've done this before, Facebook and on Google. I mean, this is all new to me. I was doing this in the... No, I mean, if it was... Bullshit. Yeah. Obviously, there's certain things you can't look up or find out. Well, not only that. I mean, I've had people tell me, well, they read body language. Mm. Well, if if little Nicky Russell and uh, is watching this, this is lost little Jake is in the book. Right. I read Nicky over the telephone. Mm. Never knew who she was. I was sitting about one o'clock one day, reading, never showed up. Phone rang. This is years ago. This is 18, 19 years ago. And um, you could tell it was a woman. You could tell she was young. You could tell she was a cockney, but that's all you could tell over the phone. And um, Nikki said, look, you know, we're desperate to see you. Didn't say why. Offered me a little bit more money, bless them. And I said, no, it's not how it works. I'll read you now. And I told her everything over the telephone. What her son looked like, what he was buried in, what happened on the day of his passing, names, conditions about tattoos, makes of the car that he was hit by, how many people was in the car, everything, you know. Mm. And her mum, Kath, bless her heart, she'll go on there and... When people say they doubt this, you say, well, how did this man <coughs> tell me things? And when they yeah. told the police, the police went, how do you know that? Yeah, especially yeah. with no prep as well. You know? Yeah, and that was purely over the telephone. And, you know, I can go through hundreds of cases and uh, I'm not trying to sell the book, but it's all in there. Yeah. <laughs> but that, but that's, that's what I'm saying. That's why I'm, like, in the, in the yes camp. Yeah, yeah. You know, well, I, why I did yeah. the book like I did is because... I've read lots of books, Doris Stokes and things like that, and they always talk about Mrs A, Mrs B, Mrs X. Well, <coughs> I'm not saying they were lying, I'm not saying at all, but it's no proof. On this one, you can get in touch with any of the people and say, did that really happen? Well, look, Ron, we're going to talk about your book and how it all began in your early days yeah, yeah. in a minute. We're going to go to a little music break, though. Lovely. All right. And then after that, we've got a question that's come in from one of our listeners. Oh all right, God. wicked. So, uh... Okay, so without further ado, uh, this is Sandman in the dark. Um, he was one of my studio clients here, and uh, we shot the video for it. Uh, it's a brand new sort of outing for him as a solo artist. So go and support him. He's uh, you can go and follow him at Real Sandman ninety eight. But I'm pretty sure if you look up Sandman in the dark, you're gonna find this stuff everywhere. So enjoy. Yeah, yeah. Staring back, oh 
What have you done to me? Cause I'm feeling so cold It's true that fate pulled us together But it tore us apart I can see clearly now Not living in the dark You found me beating down bruised I was still searching Trying to find the right one Who can stop the hurting But you're playing me for a fool Excused all you'd say or do I thought that I would have learned the first time Never chase people to stay in your life Running in circles for people who never had the time I spent so many nights just laying on my own Wishing that you were here right next to me But you're laying with another guy He doesn't know that you were with me just the other night It's time and time again, I don't know why I'm thinking you'll change after the 50 years Have you done to me? Cause I'm feeling so cold It's true that fate pulled us together But it tore us apart I can see clearly now Not living in the dark whoa, whoa. I don't know myself anymore Feel like a stranger in my skin When you let me Staring back What have you done to me Cause I'm feeling so cold It's true that fate pulled us together But it tore us apart I can see clearly now Not living in the dark Sandman in the house. There we go. Ron, okay. Ron, you don't strike me as a, a grime music lover. What's your sort of taste in music? My taste in music? Yeah. Oh, Motown, soul, rock and roll, older stuff. So would you download a bit of Sandman, this guy? No, he would download the bum, 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 version. Fox, Wiggle and Sass person. I love that sort of No mention of myself. Who are those chicks? Right, OK. Right, quickly, can we do a question? Because a question's come in from one of our viewers. Yeah, OK, so this is from Spike. Do you think a previous spirit can pass into a living being and that living being can carry that past life with them? Um, no, not exactly. I, I think a spirit can make contact. I've had it myself, where you can a spirit can enter your body, but <clears> as <throat> to stay for any length of time, I don't feel so. Mm-hmm. No. Sorry about that, Spike. Yeah. Sorry about that. Spike. <laughs> That's why I feel. But um, I, I think we can be strongly influenced by someone that's passed. I really do. And of course, Spike, it might be that he's a little bit psychic or he's a little bit open to it. As I well, say, well, I've, I've had instances when they do take people over. Well, on that then, so when you said that, you know, he, the spy could have it or whatever, so there must have been that first day that you went, what is happening to me? What is this? So let's go, let's, let's go back to the beginning. So well, you, yeah. hang on, hang on. We've got another question coming. From oh, one okay. of our, this yeah, is on. fascinating. So this is from Jenna, and she has said, um, I'd like to ask if um, you can help. Uh, she can. has dreams about people that she has never met, and they are the same faces in re- like repeating numerous dreams. What do you think it can mean? Are they previous people from my previous life, perhaps? Right, I'll answer that, because when you go into a certain sleep, a very, very deep sleep, your spirit actually leaves your body. But Mine it's connect- definitely does, because no-one can wake me up. <laughs> <laughs> no, it leaves your body, but it's connected to the lifeline, the silver cord. OK. And it, it wanders up and can go into the spirit world and meet with people. 
maybe from a previous life. Maybe this could be a relative that she thinks actually got to know. Does that make sense? Do you sense think to that you? that is possibly why when you are asleep, you wake up in the morning and you're like, bloody hell, I've just had the most vivid dream of yeah. Yeah. granddad. And also that other dream, I mean, I'm sure we've all had that that feeling that you're you're falling. You know when you wake up with a <gasps> And a lot of that is because when your spirit leaves the body... Because lids kick me out of bed. <laughs> well, no, not as often as that. But no, when the spirit leaves the body, it can be in danger, either in the spirit world or it's personal, you know, your actual physical body. And if it feels that, rather than just coming gently back down and lining itself and going into the body, it rushes back into that sense of... <gasps> as if you're right. falling and bang, you know, that type of thing. I mean, it's a very complex world, uh, yeah. dreams. And it's so not really what, about your, what about your dreams, then? Because you must... Being, being open to it, do you go sort of quite deep into dreams? I do that? sometimes, not a lot. I mean, I think because I'm dealing with it all day, I quite understand it mm. and quite in, in control of it. Mm. Um, what would you say to Jenna about having to deal with these dreams? Because she doesn't say whether or not they cause her any distress or anything. <coughs> um, she just says that she regularly sees them. So, I mean, what, what I mean, you just ride it out? or Yeah, ride it out. There's not a lot really you can do about it. Um, it. I would say it's probably a loved one from way back. And that a, a soul, a spirit, if you like, leaving the body, is meeting this soul over mm. here. Mm -hmm. But as I say, I'm not an expert on dreams. It's a different field to what I do. Yeah, but of course. I do know about the spirit leading the body, yeah. Mm -hmm. So go, going go. back to the beginning, Amazing. Ron, then. So, as I was saying, so you had a bit of a colourful past, haven't you? Yeah. But the, so, first of all, I want to talk about that, but also I want to mm. find out about the transitional time where you went... I'm seeing ghosts or whatever it is. Do you know what I mean? I want, mm. So, so take us back to the beginning, Ron. Yeah. Well, I actually see obviously, ghost. this is all in the book, isn't it? I actually see a ghost in the late seventies in a cottage that I lived in. Just see this man in the wall, see him, but didn't realise I could do then what I do now. I so you really, must have shit your pants. Not really. Well, yeah, it worried me a little bit to be honest with you. Tried to at that him. time because you think, who the fuck's that? You know, and it was so very real. I could see this this fella. So it's all like flesh and bones, totally. Yeah, I could there, see him very, very solid. Not like a. He was in a, a suit. A bed sheet or. Oh, no, no, no. He was in a suit, young man, and it turned out the road I I found out in time to come that the actual road I lived in, and this was on New Year's Eve, funny enough, and um, a chap was killed on the road, in a car crash in the fifties, on that particular on New Year's Eve. So I know I see him, but. I just, it did freak me out a little bit. I mean, you know, at that time I was doing the doors and things like that, but you can't have a fight with a spirit, so it's no good being tough, you know what I mean? you just got to... So it, it worried me. Obviously, it don't worry me now, and I've seen a lot since. But no, what it, for me, because I lived always in the gym, working the doors, in and out of prison, all that, my life had been sort of wild, you know, that type of thing. So, um, so this was, was this after prison, this gift? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So you never had any sort I'd, of no, no, little no, signs no. when you were there or anything like that? Not really. No, I mean, I knew things. I always knew things, but didn't know how, how I knew it. I remember yeah. once being on the door and there was a little toss pot coming there and I, I just said, watch him, he's going to be a problem. And, and the other one said, what, fucking a him? I went, yeah, him. And, and he was. He he got thrown out of the club after about 40, 50 minutes, come back, poured this at the windmill, poured petrol all up the doors and set light to it. And they managed to catch him and he, I think he got seven years, something like that. Wow. But I knew there was something wrong. So I'd, I'd know bits like that, but I didn't understand why. But the thing is, it, it, with mediumship, it what takes... What do you see over Amy's head, like, about her character right now? I can see a halo there, but it's... Oh, yeah. oh, I paid him <laughs> 10 quid to say that. It's a bit rusty, though. <laughs> 20 fucking <laughs> yeah. quid. I'm not that cheap. But no, so seriously... The so, mate's um, rates, Bronny. Yeah, yeah. Well, it'd be £50, pound, anyone else. <laughs> but no, getting back to this, um, I, I didn't have a lot of clue, but some crap went on in my life, relationships and other things, and, uh, yeah, my dad passing at the time. It all happened in in a very short period of time. And I went for a reading with who was Lynn Younger then. It's not Lynn, she's married on now, but yeah. And um, she just said to me, do you realise you're, you're a natural born medium? And to be honest, I mean, I love this woman a bit, but I thought she was a crank. So um, she went to make me a cup of tea and she gave me a ring to hold. And she said, little images and things are jumping into your head. So she kind of gave you the... Just give me a ring to which in. is now called psychometry. Yeah, well, I, and I held it and I was going to put it down. She went, no, just don't give it the macho bit. Just And when she come back in, she said, well, what what, did, what feelings, what divisions did you get? And when I told her, she thought I was lying. She thought I'd been doing mediumship, was having a laugh with her. I said, no. And it took off. Within five months, I was working in the so churches. And Do you think it was that ring scenario that 
Yeah, it was a trigger. I it mean, wouldn't have happened without that. You know? Well, if I'd met Lynn, no, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now. She saw the gift in me, and I sat in her circle, and uh, it's a tiny little woman, but fucking ferocious, frightened me. And I was, in the book, I was called her the Dragon Lady, you know, and I, um, she was always very hard on me, always very hard on me. You could be given a message. And in the early days, you don't do it now, but you might see A and B, or A and C and guess B, do you see what I mean? And she'd fucking know. Don't you dare guess him, I'll go. The time she was going to throw me out. Get out, get out, that's it. You couldn't, you know, if... It, if it, oh, fuck So she me. helped you, what you said earlier, about keeping it a clean read. Oh, yeah. this lady, fantastic. For me, she was... No-one could have been better for me. She was hard down the line. But what happened, um, she said to me, right, we've got a... Don't forget our money. I'm still in circle after a few months. And uh, Just explain to people what that means. Circle is where you sit and develop. So there was about four or five of us and we meditate and then Lynn's in charge of it and she'd say, right, what did you see and what did you see and what, this and that? And then you'd, you'd have a go at picking up spirits and, you know, I could do it very, very quickly and very, very well. So Lynn said, come on, come with me. We're going down to Clacton, the spiritualist church, Old Road. And it's the psychic supper. So in psychic suppers, you have a, a table with a dozen people, mm -hmm. the medium making 13, and you all have fish and chips. And um, then the medium sits and they all shuffle around, you hold someone, and you give everyone a message. So it says medium room. So Lynn's gone in, she said, come in. I went, I can't go in there. She said, what do you mean? I said, I ain't a medium. She said, you bloody, I'll get in there. So I'm in there with all the, the local mediums. And I, I just sort of hid in the corner, you know, and I thought, I was in awe of all these people. And then... Um, we come out and Lynn said, right, we're on this table here. And it was a very end table. I've never forgot it. So I thought, oh, this is going to be fun. I like watching this. I love watching Lynn work. Brilliant medium. And then she said to me, right, sit yourself down. I said, what do you mean? That's where you sit. She went, oh, it's your night. You're going to do it. I said, what, me? I got She went, don't you dare. Threw you in the deep end. Oh, don't you dare tell me no. So, oh, fuck, we ain't going to argue with her. So, um, yeah, I, they all went round and everyone said it was amazing. And um, then I was asked to go and... Uh, work in the in the church and um, do an actual show and yeah Lynn come along to watch me and uh, she's been along a few times once or twice she keeps an eye on me I know that and the, the loveliest thing for me is she said to me she's really really proud of me so yeah, that's, that's lovely. lovely that means yeah. more to me have, than have you always been not the, like the character you are like can you just walk out onto a stage like you do now back then you know yeah I, I think because obviously being on the doors I was always a good front of doorman you know so you're, you're greeting people and meeting lots of celebrities and, you know, that, that sort of thing. So I've always been... And I was a sales rep, don't forget. So right. I was always a good cold caller. I've just had that knack of going in and being able to talk to people and putting them at ease or... Being well, like they're a... really cold now, aren't they? So, yeah. <laughs> 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 very good. Very good. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, well, that's just, that's just totally thrown me off now. Uh, but, um, fuck's sake. I've, I've totally forgotten what I was going to ask now. I think Amy's... Uh, Having a moment. <laughs> Should we just let Amy laugh for a bit? Yeah, go on. <laughs> <laughs> That's wrong. <laughs> See, I think we found our ringtone. Uh, <laughs> I'm so sorry, Rob. <laughs> should, we, should we go to some music while Let's Amy composes <laughs> All right, so next up, we've got another band here called Paper Fighter with their song Far Away. If you like what you're about to see, you can go to at Paper Fight Band, <laughs> and we'll be back with more from Ronnie Buckingham as well. Don't go anywhere.
Welcome we're back. back. That I, was amazing. Well, <laughs> Amy's, Amy's changed her pants. So yeah, she's fine now. I've just recovered from that. Uh, very sorry for the hysterics, but that is what happens when you present with this. That's it. So uh, we, thank you very much for Paper Fight for sending that in. That was far away. Once again, if you want to go and see them, it's at Paper Fight Band. Please do support all the music we do have on the show because we couldn't do it without them. Mm. So, uh, uh, Ron, during that break and while Amy was shitting herself, uh, there's been another question or two coming in, is that right? Yeah, 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 of course. OK, so, uh, Ronnie, you've previously said that we have many past lives. Yep. Is there a possibility that parts of those past lives carry on? Yes, I strongly believe that. I think spirit's like a diamond, many facets, and I believe that certain bits... Ca- yeah, basically, yes, that's the way to put it. I think you carry on from this life what you learned in the last life, and some things overlap. So okay. very much so. It can sort of weave a pattern into the life you leave now, if that mm-hmm. makes sense to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. That's amazing. Interesting. Very, very, very interesting stuff. So I hope that has answered your question. Oh, so uh, we're going to find out a bit more about you, Ron, and your book and some of the cool highlights of your career and whatnot. But uh, mm-hmm. I want to have, I I have a bit of fun. this is one of his highlights. I want to have a bit oh. of fun. Uh, we have this as a regular feature on the show now. This is True or False. <laughs> <laughs> Am I meant to do that? Are we out? Yeah, we're no. Cool, we're out. All right, then. So, uh, obviously, it says what it is on the tin, true or false. So, I know Ron, so I can't really take part. So, Ron has given me some questions to read to Amy, and Amy's going to see if she can get her psychic head on and mm. get these answers right. My, no no help from the spirit world? I'm sorry, my, co- my computer has just had a mental breakdown. That's fine. Okay. Do you need it for this? I don't know. Cool, let's find out. All right, so this is true or false. All right, question one. Ron has read for members of the royal family. True or false? False. What's what's your basis? I think that any member of the royal royal family, like in the gang, there'd probably be some sort of clause in their royaltiness that says, don't be dilly-dallying with that lot, because... You know, of the baby Jesus and all of that. Fair. OK, Ron, what's the answer? Well, true, but, but outer members. Yeah. Outer members. Can I have a half point for that? Because I did can, say in, you in. Can, Go on, you and can. embellish us with uh, who that was, Ron. Did you have to sign an NDA? No, no, it wasn't done like that. One was, um, oh, I'm trying to think, the Marquis of Blenford, Jamie Blenford, who's Winston Churchill's grandson. Ah. And Tara Palmer Tomkinson. Oh, wow. Who was a cousin to the royal. She's Royals. more of a royal fuck-up, though, isn't she? She's a lovely woman, is it? Well, was, <laughs> still is. Um, yeah, do you, ha, lovely do you, soul. Have you ever been in a position where you've met somebody in real life and then met them again afterwards? No. Right. No, no, no. All right, so that was that one. All right, question two. Ron swam five miles non-stop for charity. True or false? Five miles is a fucking long way to swim. But people can swim the Chanel... I am going to say, cool, blimey. I'm going to say yes, because I think you're quite a determined chap. Mm. I'm going to say no, because I can't fucking swim. Oh, dead <laughs> nebbit. There you go. Okay. Hate deep water. It's one of my, he sank, he my sank biggest five miles. fear. You sank five miles. Oh, okay. yeah, I could do All that. Right, so half a point still. OK, so question three. Ron was once arrested for a shooting. True or false? I'm going to burp. Oh, well, I know you've been in some tricky old situations, Ronald. One or two, one or two. I d- oh, Christ. Um, I'm going to go with yes, because you didn't specify what it was that was being shot, so you could have been <laughs> grouse hunting and accidentally taken off somebody's TV aerial. Mm, no, I actually was pulled in about a shooting of a... A gentleman who was shot for his letterbox, and um, it was yeah, a male shot. <laughs> hey! Very good, but no, he actually, he you actually, are exquisite. He lived next door to a friend of mine years ago, and he grasped the friend up. And at the time, I was caught doing a robbery with a shotgun, and so they just uh, put two and two together and said to me, "Right, we think you shot this man." Right. And I said, no, I didn't. And Did you? No, of course not. <laughs> and, well, no, I'd have got charged with it if I did. But, they, yeah, they, they had a good go at making it stick, and it didn't stick. That was a 
Hackney. But you got it right, Aim. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I was accused of it. Okay, uh, so question four. I'm shitting myself now. Uh, question four. Uh, Ron ran the London Marathon. True or false? False. You're correct. I, I, I used to do 10 miles on a regular basis with the Victoria Park Harriers, but I never went the 26 miles. I'm too heavy for that. I was always carrying about 17 stone. Me too. So, no. That wasn't okay. It. I'll have the point for that. Thank you. Okay. Question five. Uh, Ron, and the last question. Ron did the London to Brighton bike ride in under four hours. I totally believe that. <laughs> That's true. That's yeah, I did it three hours, 40 minutes last year. Rose uh, five grand for the. British Art Foundation. So Amazing. Very proud of that. There yeah, and so you should be. I've Thank totally you. lost track of what you scored there. So I you think got... I got three and a half points. Cool. That was true or false, everybody. True yeah. or false. Okay. True or false. And we're out. Cool. And we're out. Lovely we, we, job. We, we, we definitely need that little that cue, don't we, to know. All right, so still to come, we've got some more music and stuff. Uh, also, uh, if you're interested in a bit of... I don't know, is it meditation? But um, Ron is going to take you through a bit of a spirit walk at the end of this podcast as well. So stick around yeah. if you want to have a nice relaxing finish. Mm. Uh, probably the only relaxing finish we'll have on this show. Highly but recommended. That, but, but that's coming up. Uh, also, I need to get this in as well for my for my wife. Now, um, uh, she runs a business called Managori and uh, she's going to be running a Macmillan Cancer uh, coffee and cake event uh, to raise some money so we're going to read out this uh, amy's going to help me read this too uh, so this year manager has decided to hold a macmillan coffee morning to raise money for cancer patients and macmillan nurses uh, that they're, they're doing in this in the loving memory of lydia's dad and also in support of her dear friend nadia foreman and her son nick who has been battling a rare cancer these last few months. We really, really hope you can support Mana Jewelry in this. Mana Jewelry will hold the coffee morning, or the coffee and cake morning, at the Jardins in, on E Street, that's Braintree. Um, and the doors will open be open to anyone who would like to purchase cake and raise money on Saturday the 26th of September from 10.30am. OK, uh, Mana Jewelry has managed to secure some great prizes for the raffle from the likes of Braintree Printing Company, OC Media Solutions, all the way up to Chop House and lots of other nice stuff as well. So please check Manor Jewelry out on Facebook and pop along and we hope to see you there. And I would just like yeah. to um, clarify, since the uh, government restrictions have changed slightly with regard to social distancing outside your bubble, so on and so forth, um, Lydia and Manor Jewelry and everybody involved in it have gone to great lengths to make yeah. this a socially... Um, We've got all separate tables. Yeah, all the everything, everything. It, it, we're, we, are, we are good to go. So don't be afraid, come and buy cake and let's raise some money and um, we have just got another question I, this is fantastic thank you so much to everybody who's taking time to listen this evening yeah. and um, and sending on your questions because this is fantastic we've got a question that's come in um, do you believe our loved ones that have passed on make themselves known to us at any random time or usually when they feel that we need them most 100% yeah I agree with that and um, they leave little signs as well and often when I'm doing readings I pick up on these little signs it's funny I just uh read the other week uh, a young girl come all the way from Nottingham and it was quite funny I told her dad came through and told me that she had this ornament of an elephant in her front window that she loved and her husband hated you know but he wanted her <laughs> to keep it there and she agreed with it so yeah they give little signs um, often I say to people you're, you're surrounded by robins or robins come right up to them or it can be feathers it can be all sorts of things or just a sense of their dad you know or that feeling of and Often people say they feel them sit on the bed and things like that. They're, they, they're never far away. I mean, when you need them, they're there. Mm -hmm. um, they're not there all the time. They've got a life to live over there, you know, not sitting on clouds playing harps. They, they live a life. But when you're down or you really need, need them, or it's a big anniversary like a wedding or the birth of a child, they're always around, always around. And, yeah, often make themselves known. So, yeah. That's I, I like, I like these one. questions that are coming in now. Ronnie, you do have a Facebook page and all that stuff, don't you? Yes, so if anyone yeah. does have more questions or want to find out more about Ronnie or, you know, go and see a show, all that stuff, I'm sure yeah. you'll answer them, wouldn't you? So yeah, if always. you just put Ronnie Buckingham Medium, isn't well, it? What yeah, I'll do Ronnie is, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll Ronnie put, I'll put the links to all Ronnie's socials on our comments this evening. So if you do want to get in touch, I'm quite sure mm. that a couple of our viewers this evening would, yeah, would love to. You're still doing um, socially distant readings at yeah, the moment. Yeah, I'm still doing readings, one-to-one -one readings, yeah. And there's a few feet between us, so uh, yeah. quite booked up at the oh, moment. Oh, okay. But um, yeah, you got, you got obviously you'll eventually public shows will be a thing again and all that. So well, evidently, uh, uh, yeah. If it's 
we're doing them with big, big spaces in between, so smaller shows. But I know we've got one at the Maylands Golf Course, which I think might be sold out. But that's, I think it's uh, September the 24th of this month, something like that, something like that. But that's all on your page, isn't it, all the details? Yeah, and yeah. then in October, Mark and Arto's in Hoddesdon, the restaurant, is starting up again. So that's a three-course meal. And I've been there for about 10 years now, Mark and Arto, so it's always, always very, very busy. But it's obviously it's distancing and families on tables. But it comes with a three-course meal. Lovely. Mm. So let's talk about the book. So your book, uh, Medium Rare, yep. it was a number one bestseller, wasn't it? Yeah, it, it sold. In the first week, it went to bestsellers. I think it sold a 1,000 in the first week. And it's had fantastic reviews. I mean, it's getting on for, I think, about 280-something reviews and 90-odd percent of five stars. So That's good. It's, it's emotional to read the reviews. I've I've read them and, it, it you know, what people think of and what people say you've done from it. Yeah, so, yeah, it makes you very humble. So where does the book take us, obviously, from the beginning to today? Or? Yeah, it takes me from the beginning of, of my life, you know, as a sort of East End kid uh, with a, a father that was a, a, a compulsive gambler, you know, and all the clothes come from the second-hand shops and very, very old. So do Amy's. <laughs> uh, no, very, very old at school, you know, and uh, moving around and other bits and just life in general and things I did. It's quite funny in places, I'm told, and uh, witty and others, and then... But it's warts and all, isn't it? They oh, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, back. you know, um, 19, I, I was in Ballstall for an armed robbery, and uh, then I did an 18-month later on, then a two years, then a four for conspiracy, and, um, yeah, working doors and womanising and uh, fighting. <laughs> that was Like life, I said, really. colourful past, right? Being down but, at the gyms, yeah. But has... I mean, it's in the book, but, like... Uh, mediumship made you turn a bit of a corner, did it? Yeah, it's uh, it, it showed me another aspect of life. <clears throat> it's, I think you're always... I don't know, I think I was a good doorman. I'm not saying I was the toughest man out there, but I was a good doorman. I could hold my hands up, look after myself and was diplomatic. But it's a young man's job, you know. When it, what, what was I going to do after that? And uh, I'm thankful to mediumship because um, it, it's given me a living and it, it's given me a place in society and it's, it's helped, I think, pay back a lot of the wrongs I've done and obviously I've I've been up to the right mischief in the past. Do you uh, think you'd? Where do you think you'd be without if this medium shit never happened? Like if it never came. I out? hate to think, Rob. To be honest with you, uh, I hate to think. I mean, what else could I do? I was too old. I'd done building site work, but I had no skills, just labouring. A doorman, you know, what are you going to be in your fifties, sixties? I mean, I had a good run. I, I didn't retire, so I was about forty-eight on the doors, which is good. And I re retired intact, but you only get into your 50s and 60s, you're going to be someone's punch bag. And what do you do from them? So I don't know. I mean, I'd have always eaten to live in out. I'd have, I've always been someone that can put me, me nut to something and get by. But no, I love what I do. And I, I'm very, very fortunate that I've, I've become good at it, or so they tell me. And, um, and I, I'm just thankful for all those that I've got a fantastic following. Fantastic following. The loyalist crowd ever. You know, some real, real lovely people out there who. So where can people get the book? It's obviously Amazon only. Yeah, Amazon. Yeah, yeah I've heard that eBay are doing it now, but on Amazon I think it's about 11 quid delivered. Um, but nice. look it up online. Just look at the reviews. The I'm going to take a moment through. to try and uh, find the Amazon listing and I will put it in the comments for anybody who wants to uh, track down a copy. Yeah, yeah just wicked. Ronnie Buck in a medium rear. And so, Ronnie, comments. you're here on the toast train. Uh, yeah. Now, one of the main things about the toast train, as well as our guests, is to eat some toast. Ah. So uh, what I'd like you to do, Ronnie, if you can just grab that, loaf of bread just over the other end there oh, yeah, yeah, get a yeah. couple of slices out and let's let's get some toast in now um you got in a bit of a pickle tonight didn't you, you didn't quite understand what think, the requirements were well, about the toast I frame. think let's just get down in other to words it. i'm i'm but no but no you have, ronnie um, didn't listen to the instructions but you've you've basically gone upstairs and raided my cupboard with something yeah. haven't you so get that toast in or oh, um, give him a hand aim because i think it's a bit of a Weird one, isn't it? There yes. No, hang on. Uh, go on. You want that one? Is this antique? This suck it down. Cool. Right, go. we've got toast. Right. So, uh, Ronnie, um, what have you managed to salvage out of my cupboard to surprise us with tonight? Um, yeah, the one and only chocolate spread. Oh, hey. get in. This is for a young man in his early days, because I knew him when he was just that big. Uh, used to go through jars of Nutella and still guilty. cocoa pops. Cocoa Pops, the Cocoa Pop King. Any yeah. chocolate, mate. Any yeah. chocolate. So, That's if you what chocolate spread, if you hadn't have uh, buggered it up tonight, what would you have bought? I'd have. What's your go-to on toast? Oh yeah, it's peanut butter and jam. PB oh. and jam. You would have had a mixed mixed audience. Adam, producer, what do you reckon you'd have made of a bit of peanut butter or and jam? 
I've never tried it, you know. Oh, you got it. Are you all about together? You haven't lived. Together? Yeah. Yeah, it's a PB and J, man. Have you done it? So that's what I want to know. I did it when I was in America because uh, my there, friends, yeah. when I when I was in America, they were like, "Yeah, because you guys don't eat PB and J." And I was like, first of all, do not ever say PB and J. It's either peanut butter and <laughs> jam, or uh, they made me try it, and I was like momentarily <laughs> repulsed, and then I had to hide the fact that I quite enjoyed it. Yeah, it's lovely. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. So it if you would have bought that, I don't know if you would have scored that well amongst us, but now you've got chocolate spread. I think you've probably well, saved saved yourself almost. But yeah, I, I mean, yeah, are you a chocolate yeah. spread fan? Of course I bloody am. I was eating it out it of isn't. the jar. I was eating it out of the jar. I've got some fabulous, uh, it's called uh, Nature, Start Nature or something, vegan chocolate spread in my cupboard, and it's the absolute bloody course you have. Don. And I was mm. eating spoons of it like you do with Biscoff oh, yeah. uh, just before I came. Are uh, you a chocolate man? Who isn't chocolate? Yeah. Come on. Oh, I don't Everyone's know. Chocolate. You've got a sweet tooth on, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Cheesecake. That's why I'm a fat bastard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. OK, well, I'm looking forward to... Um, well, in fact, I'll just have it straight out of the jar. I mean, I don't yeah, even need the there's, toast, there's really. The, there's the knife there. Oh, yeah. There we go, Ron. Oh, there we go. Grab, grab that knife, Ron. Well, while well, he's doing that, that, we that should on. probably run the titles for this, shouldn't we? Yeah, yeah. let's do that. Uh, have we got titles? Yeah. OK, let's, let's hit some titles. So, uh, Fabulous. Okay. Hide this bit. If you weren't married, Ron, and getting lovely meals cooked for you, what what would be your stable diet? Uh, pie mash. Yeah. Pie of mash. It bloody would Can be. you knock up a good pie mash? No, no I buy it. I buy a good pie mash. <laughs> he can't knock up a good anything no, in I can't. the kitchen. I'm useless. Luckily, there's three kitchen idiots sitting here. So, I mean, if 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 the apocalypse came right now. We'd have to hit, just grab the tinned food yeah. and run, surely. Yeah, beans on toast. We'd even be able to have toast, wouldn't they? Bakers, would they? Good enough no. to be able to put a bit of um, bit of cheese on it as well. Right. I can grate a bit of cheese on it quite well. So let's let's get a bit for add as well. So, yeah, so there we got you know, half. So each. there we go. We have got Tesco's own. Yeah, I'll give him the larger half because I'm a very generous man. So <laughs> obviously everyone like knows about Nutella, but Tesco's don't do a bad one. It was pretty good actually. I would have probably spread it about eight more times. Yeah, you need about 15 yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. more um, on there. Mind you, when you cook something yourself, it never tastes the same, does it? So I don't know what this is going to be like. <laughs> Chocolatey and toasty. Mm. Good enough for me, ma'am. I well, love can't it. go wrong with it, can you? Mm, 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 mm. Mm. We'd like to know in the comments mm. what Lovely. people prefer. Amy. If they're a Nutella person or a chocolate, like Tesco's person. Go on. What's the um, crispiness score at? Mm, it's, a f- it's a five. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, we've got to change the bread up because I think we've had the same fucking bread mm. Mm. It's every week. Not now. the same loaf. Yeah, yeah, you know me. I mean. mm. I felt good. I mean, there is never a time in the day where you couldn't eat this. It's just, no. it just makes me so happy. You can't mm. eat too much of it either. No, you can't. Like with, uh, mm. I don't know, savoury shit or whatever, like you, mm. can, you can get savoury now, but mm. you can just go all over this. Oh, I can't so believe I've happy. made such a mess of it, look. <laughs> all good, mate. Mm. Ron's in trouble. Yeah. Oh, for maybe. All right. So, you can't go wrong with chocolate spread. Mm. But you can go wrong with forgetting yeah. that you're coming on the toast train and that you're supposed to bring a topping for toast. Yeah. So, but we haven't had chocolate spread yet on the show. No. So that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. So well salvaged. Mm. The people on the podcast are just listening to me, listening to me chew, which is great. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to score this. A seven... <gasps> it would have been an eight, but because he didn't bring his own one tonight, right. he mm-hmm. loses the point. So seven, that's, uh, and that's a high score that for me. That is a high score. I'm that's gonna go. Good. I'm gonna go with six because it wasn't the it's vegan. It's good, one. but it wasn't the vegan, and it was spread too thinly, and you stole it out of Rob's cupboard. All right, then. There you go. But that's a that's so quite a, that's quite a good bad. score, it's mate. Out of fifteen, that ain't bad. We need, we, we, we need to <laughs> it's get out of seven hundred, Ron. We, we need to get a scoreboard up because I'm forgetting all the previous ones now. We've had so many shows. Oh yes. But um, that's not about. Oh, none of the others Let's got see Ron's, oh, no, 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 no. See toast. Tragic toast story. Wicked. So, uh, I've totally forgot what I was going to ask you. Oh, that's right. So you've read some pretty high-profile people, and you've been on some high-profile shows. Let's talk about that. Yeah, um, yeah. As I was on, um, I was a psychic advisor to, to Big Brother when it first came out. When Jay Goodman, how was did on that it. happen? Well, because obviously I, they found you and not these yeah, other showbiz ones. Well, right? this is the thing I've never done in life. I've never pushed myself forward. Never. I've always let people come to me, and uh, yeah, they found me through some 
form of means, I don't know, but they got in touch. And what they basically did, they got all the contestants before they went into the house to draw their ideal house. And oh. then they just numbered them one to So they knew it would be a feature then, before the show? Oh, yeah, of course. And then they just numbered it one to 12, and then they sent them to me, and I wrote on the back of the drawings or what I thought would happen and blah, blah, blah. And then I sent them back to them. And, uh, yeah, everything I said. So Kate Lawler willing it. I also said that Jay Goody would be the most famous one, the most controversial one from, from the house. And then I went on the, on the show a couple of times and they had me reading doodles and then they designed a T-shirt that I read. And I got a mention in the, in the Big Brother book. I got asked to do it again, but, no, I didn't do that. I was on Big Breakfast and uh, Morning Breakfast with Ian Lane. And those two nutty girls, what's the Sue, something or other, you know what the two... Mel and Sue. Yeah, they were nice. They were nice. I was on there with them. And, uh, yeah, so I did quite a Scream Team. I was on that. Mystic Challenge, Inside Out on BBC. Uh, Scream Team, The Grave of Robin Hood. So I did a lot of TV. And uh, then I got pulled up by Eve O'Brien, a medium, and she said, what's the first class medium doing second class psychic work? So make it serious. So I sort of cut the TV out, to be honest with you. And, yeah. um, it's I'll, an interesting I'll... choice, because obviously you're right, you know, you can get kind of pigeonholed, if you like, with these people as well who who don't believe any TV because it's TV and who yeah. knows what's prepped and stuff. Well, like, sometimes they want you to, to hand it up a little bit, you know, and I didn't want to be doing that. I just wanted to stick to... I would have, I'd like to have done a show like Colin Fry, you know, sort of Sixth Sense, something like that. That's what I would, would have been ideal for me, but... That never come along. Well, look, I think people are gagging to see a little bit of what you do. Now, we've got a, a phone clip uh, that we're going to show. Now, uh, apologies if it's not the best quality or whatever, but we're going to run a bit of a clip. Mm. Uh, Adam's obviously going to monitor it and just, you know, see where the, the goods come. But mm. basically, this is you in action at one of your shows, right? Yeah, a gig, yeah. Well, a show, yeah. I'm talking your talk now, gigs. So, so we obviously get to see how messages come to you and how you deliver it and stuff like mm. that. So, this, so if you are interested in this and you haven't seen Ronnie's shows, uh, here's a clip. Ronnie, can you just move the toast bag Are we out of the, the audio? Are we still talking? Oh, we're still on air. Oh. Are we still... OK, fine. Are we still on air? I, I thought we were going to the clip or have we got to keep going? Are you having a malfunction? OK. OK. Uh, well, here give you it, go. Here's give us a shout when you're ready. Pun of the day. Pun of the day has just come in from one of our listeners that says... I ain't afraid of no toast. Yes. <laughs> oh, it's absolutely oh, brilliant. fantastic. Brilliant. Thank you very oh, much. I bet you earned a good crust. Oh, oh good boom, boom. very okay, nice. Okay, so Adam's given us the green light to go to this video now. So this is Ronnie Buckingham, the medium in action. Like mum's sister, something like that. Mum still here? On this side of the road, correct? Okay, that's fine. That's a statement. I'm not asking you. I just feel as if people didn't get a chance to say goodbye to her. Does that make sense to you? As if she just went in some way? Now, I wasn't sure if this was an accident in some way, like she was run over or yeah. hit by something? Yeah. At like a van or something like this? Yeah. And would it have been around school time? As if she'd come out of school yeah. and was going home and there would have been friends with her? And would this have been very near the end of the week? Yeah. Like a Friday or Thursday, Friday time? Okay. Would she have left a sister behind here, or she has sisters? Are they all girls or something, or just girls? Two sisters and brothers. Sorry? Two sisters and brothers. Oh, okay, but mainly girls. Okay. <laughs> Where does the J name come into all this, J? Oh, my God. J? Yeah. Is that you? My brother, John. He's passed. He's passed on? Yeah. Thank you. In a very sort of abrupt way, yeah. why do I feel he wants to say sorry? Does that make sense to you? You have something wrong with his head here? Mm. Now, I wasn't shocked this was suicide when he came through, or brain tumour, or something like that. You understand me? Mm. Something to do with his head. Because yeah. he made me feel sad and he made me feel depressed. Would he have been a little bit older than this girl? Yeah. Like 20s or something like this? Yeah. And you didn't get to say goodbye to him? And he's been gone a while now? Three, four years? Mm. Less than that. Yeah. But it was to do with his head. I don't know if he suffered a fit or there was yeah, something where yeah. epileptic, something like this, and he went. Yeah. Um, I don't feel anyone was there for him at the time. No. I thought he might have been at home or somewhere where he was at. So I don't think it was a flat or upstairs or how this would have been. That feels early in the week to me, yeah. like a Monday, Tuesday time. Would that be right? Okay. But your parents are here. Yeah. Has there been a divorce between them or a separation? No. 
Then go back to the... Oh, you're the mum. No, I want to go back. I want to leave you. I want to go back to the young girl. Had her parents separated or something? Yeah. Thank you. I'm having to get them to just box in here. So there'd be another child apart from Joe and this young lady? You have other children? No. Right. And Joe's your son? Okay. But did you lose or miscarry? Yeah. You lost one. As in, lost. Then you've got three kids. And I thought it was two boys and a girl. Okay. What's so important about April? They keep running me to April. Now, if, you, if you're not to do your job, it's to do with this young girl. And who's like Emily, Emma, Emma, where's this sort of name? Eve. This side of life. I'm just going to ask the young girl to cut away so I can work with your son. Is that alright for you? I know they're, they're both important. And this is your sister's girl? Um, that's my mum. Yep, but the, the little girl yeah, yeah. is your mum's sister? Okay. Yeah. Is there a tattoo in Joe's memory? Or he had a tattoo, possibly? No. He's had a tattoo, I mean, I've got loads, but I feel there was something with a tattoo here. He always wanted a tattoo. And did he pass close to someone's birthday? Say two weeks? Yeah, my daughter. Thank you. Now you're still with his dad? Yeah. You agree with that? Did he work for his dad at one time? Or there was like, is your husband self employed? Or yeah. a manual way? Yeah. Like a builder? Or, or like a roofer? So a carpenter, but builder. Did your son work for him at times? Sometimes. Off and on. Yeah. To me, he comes back as a very chilled lad. Yeah. And all I can see is headphones on. Have you ever into music? Or? Yeah. You understand that? Yeah. Okay. Was he actually like a Joseph? Or? Yeah. But just J.O. J yeah. Hmm. He had a girlfriend? He used to make out he did. He used to make out he did. <laughs> <laughs> is he, um, I felt he was cremated, is that, is that, he's, he's, he's buried. And you still visit the grave. Thank was you. he into football? Then who supports Man United or a team in red? My partner. Your partner's Man U. So you said you have a daughter. Do you have another child as well? No. Just the one. Then I can see you with a son. And I see Joe will be in his name somewhere. I don't know why he's going on to talk about apple trees. There you go. Amazing go. stuff. Absolutely so amazing. Obviously, it's a, a short clip, but um, it's a, obviously a small insight of how you do it. But, yeah. uh, it, you know, it, is it different every time or is it generally the same way it works? Well, you, I've had people come through from every you know, plane crashes, you know, have died in plane crashes, suicides, cancers, heart attacks, murdered. I, I think everything, every possible way there is to pass across, I've covered. Yeah. Um, what I wanted people to understand in those clips is I always explain to the audience beforehand that the only time I'll ever ask them a question is when they shout, if they shout a name at me. Uh, and apart from that, everything's a statement. So when you say, was it a Tuesday? I'm saying, I believe it was a Tuesday. Is it a Tuesday? And so the crowd know that and they just, just answer this or no. And I think the lady there was a bit overwhelmed with it, but you can see she was nodding her head to, I think, about 98% of everything I said. So that's just how it works. And uh, people come up afterwards and say, you know, it was, it was lovely. It's brought comfort. And that's that's the greatest thing. When you when you heal someone, you know, heal a broken heart, or especially if you get a, a parent that wasn't very loving, uh, and they come through and just say, "Look, it wasn't I didn't love you. It's just that that was my way, you know." Or they had some sort of maybe a drink problem or a depression problem or something like that. But of course, when you get to the other side, you although you'll come back to show me you had those conditions, you don't have those conditions. If you see what I mean, it's it's all very clean in the in the spirit world and. Uh, you don't suffer the pain anymore. So it's a pain-free existence. You leave all that behind. So that's yeah, nice it's, to know. It's nice yeah, to know. It's lovely. Yeah. Absolutely. But um, see, this is what I wanted to sort of showcase you about. You know, for people that haven't heard of you or don't believe in this sort of thing or are not sure about it. You know, mm. I want people to go to your shows. I want people to go to your website and see what you're more about. You know, read the book as well. Yeah. Uh, but Amy, have you got something you wanted to just plug there? Yeah, just a little segue, actually. Um, we, we've we got some uh, some artistry and sculpture and uh, vintage and collections and amazing things going on local to us in Braintree. Um, find a fabulous um, artist called Judy who has organised this event. Um, it's being held at the barn at the Hare and Hounds in Braintree. The postcode of which I'll put all these details on here, but it's a pop up exhibition on the 19th and 20th of September. It's 12 till 6 pm. Um, there is some, uh, there's furniture, and uh, what else have we got on here? Um, there's an exhibition there 
and this is quite if you're into your art this is interesting it's a correspondence in concrete for, and it's called captured souls oh. the human condition individuality duality order versus chaos social mobility equality and change so there's lots lots going on there's vintage toys there's artwork there's <coughs> abstract sculpture there's so so much and it is local and it is so important to us here at the toast train we try and do it with our music here to support local music local musicians and artists so it'd be great if you're at a loose end on the 19th and 20th of this month that you can go along to the barn at the hare and hounds and go and support local artists mm, wickedly 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 so uh before we leave uh ron uh so once again if you want to go and check out your stuff like yeah, where, yeah. where do people go yeah on tomorrow you can go on facebook page i've got two one ronald buckingham and the other one is the biggest one yeah, is a uh, medium Ronnie backing. So no one's I'm going to put a link to your yeah, uh, professional pages on here, so that anyone who wants to contact you, um, either with us or moved on, can mm. contact you. Oh, yeah. um, okay. And um, and if you want to go and um, book a reading with them, Ronnie is doing readings at the moment, so don't be afraid to get in touch. Even if you are sitting on the fence a little bit, mm. you might be a little bit curious, you might be a little bit fearful, but um, absolutely do it. Just well, speak, do it. Speaking of the fence, uh, I would love Ron. Uh, as not tonight, obviously, but like at some point before the next podcast, if you could do something with Amy to see what, if you can make hair? her a believer. Yeah, I'm not not a believer. I'm not not a believer. I'm just um, I'm you need, just me. You need to see. Uh, for yourself. Well, that's yeah. um, I think that is something I'm very very proud of that I've converted so many people that were complete and utter skeptics. Yeah, I wouldn't say that. I'm just a looking skeptic. at the reviews in the book, and there's so many people that said they never believed in any of this until they. They come and say, well, oh, they had a private reading. And, um, yeah, and I've, I've read for bereavement clubs as well. One came That's from... That's very interesting. I was going to ask Wood, about that. All to do with the loss of children. And there was a dozen, and I read all 12, and all 12 said, unbelievable. So uh, with very unusual clues. Very unusual clues. Awesome, awesome. All right, so listen, mm. we've got another bit of music coming up uh, by Nathan Thomas uh, in a second. But um, if you're listening on the podcast, uh, we're not going to be showing Ron's, because uh, it's a video on the podcast, but we, we are going to be showing it on Facebook. So if you're listening to this on Spotify, um, just head to our Facebook page, uh, Toast Train TV, and just go to the end of this episode's uh, video and you'll be able to see Ron's spirit walk. Uh, but for those of people on YouTube and Facebook, you can better see it right now. Uh, so before we exit, Ron, um, what is a spirit walk? Yeah, spirit walk is um, basically you need to be somewhere very quiet, away from the kids. So this, this is just... what you do in bed or something? Yeah, or, well, yeah. you can do it in bed or any time. Yeah. You can do it any time of day. But you just need to be quiet without interruption. Turn your phones off. And then basically you just sit, you listen to my voice and you imagine what I'm telling you to imagine. So I, when I take people through, I get people to feel things. A lot. One, I don't know which one we're going to do, but I've done several. It's the one we did here. Okay, well, that might have been, I don't think it's the hot air balloon or which. No, that was the on beach. On the beach. Yeah. So, yeah. So I try and tell people that when I say to you, you're walking on grass and the grass is damp and the, the, the grass comes between your toes, feel it. Absolutely feel it. And because you're listening to my voice and I'm, I'm guiding you through somewhere. And basically what I do is I, I take you somewhere and then I leave you and you meet your loved ones, your spirit loved ones. And I, I think I had about, the last one I did, I think it was 480 people said it was the greatest experience this is very interesting because i um i knew we were going to be bolting the spirit walk mm. onto the end of this but um i hadn't previously spoken to ronnie or rob about it um but just from what you're describing there is yeah, fascinating for me because um the power of the mind and the way that our brains work absolutely fascinates yeah. me and um when i was pregnant i um i was determined to have a home birth and so i did a course in hypnobirthing yep. and a lot of that is uh, it's, a, it's a form of guided meditation is, yeah. and um visualization and yep. that kind of thing and and without having done that course i mean you know, birth is a glorious thing. Sometimes women suffer from trauma. Sometimes it's very, very, very spiritual. Mm. I wanted it to be as spiritual as possible and I yeah. wanted to be as calm and collected and just cool as possible. And I did that. And so I did a lot of visualisation. I did a lot of... Mine was forests, walking through forests. Yeah. And that's how I did it. And I was able to have my little boy in the conservatory on a <laughs> Tuesday afternoon. Yeah. And, and it was fabulous. So yeah. what you're describing is 
you, you can you no matter well, who you know, it does, doesn't it? it doesn't matter whether you're a skeptic or not no, it's got no, nothing no, to do no. with believing or not believing but the power of the mind is so glorious that if you just let yourself be calm be still and go to those places yeah. you can achieve incredible things like having a baby with no drugs in your conservatory on a Tuesday afternoon. Mm, I'll take your word for that one. But no, <laughs> with, with mine, uh, as I say, I get people to feel, to sense, and I just put them into that frame of mind where they're open mm -hmm. to see spirit. Mm -hmm. They're not trying to do it. They don't know what's at the end of it, and mm -hmm. it happens just naturally. But mm -hmm. the results have been absolutely and phenomenal. And I can talk can because I've been on that mm. beach. I've been in that hot air balloon, and I have been in that forest because I took myself there. Yeah. And it, it is it's so achievable. It's so, so achievable. Yeah. And if you get nothing from it in a, uh, yeah, met, met me granddad type thing, mm. what you will achieve is the most pleasant sense of calm exactly. and it is an incredible way to de-stress and anybody who has led a chaotic life and has learnt to meditate um, and 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 breathe properly will know exactly what I'm talking mm. about so it's got a little bit got nothing to do with meeting your granddad but more to do about be in control of yourself and learning how to breathe and be at one with it's yourself. A lot, it's, a lovely, it's a beautiful experience. And um, I say a lot of people saw family members, not just one or two, but many, mm -hmm. many family, and, and just felt the, the love and mm -hmm. actually felt the holding and the, mm -hmm. the physical side of it as well mm -hmm. and come back in, in a different state of mind. Well, yeah. look, you, you're going to get Glorious. to try it for yourselves, guys, yeah. if you watch the end of this Facebook video. Like Give I said, if you're on Spotify, just yeah. head over to our Facebook and check out the video or just look up Ronnie Buckingham's Spirit Walk. You know, they're on YouTube and stuff. So before we dive out, I uh, just want to do our sponsors bit. Uh, Ad, do you want to kick us off? Got your mic? Well, I certainly can. Uh, yeah, OC Media Solutions, anything, laptop, iPhones, computers, upgrades, websites, everything you can do with a computer, we take care of. Um, www.ocm.solutions Fabulous, me. okay and uh, <laughs> another very important sponsor that we have here on the Toast Train is parcelbroker.co.uk all of the mainstream well-known household names in the courier industry getting your goods delivered from A to B if you want the best rates in sending your parcels you need to head to parcelbroker.co.uk All right and if you need anything printed on anything that's canvases like paper or like our brick wall we've got behind us here a lovely canvas brick wall and um, then simply go to braintree printing company the number is 01376 345 915 the website www.braintreeprinting.co.uk or follow them on facebook instagram twitter or linkedin that's braintree printing company now um ron you've been a brilliant guest thank you so much for coming pleasure. in thank you for uh, having we're, yeah. we're going to go to a little bit of music first mm. uh, by about uh, by a guy called nathan thomas uh, and then we're going to have your spirit walk straight after that. So do yeah. stick around. There's more to come. And uh, thank you very much. If you've uh, if you've enjoyed the show, then please uh, give us a like, give us a share. If you're a band or an artist and want your music on the show or just a bit of knowledge you want us to share, you know, if you've got an event or something, we're all for that. Absolutely. Thank you very much for joining us, everybody. And thank you very yeah. much for sending in your comments and your questions to Ronnie. It's been a fantastic episode and we have had a great time. Yeah, yeah, Ronnie much. Buckingham, thank everybody. Thank so you. coming up right now, we've got Nathan Thomas with Namaste, produced by Mark Rapson. And if you like what you hear, you can go to at Futuristica Music and, of course, stick around for Ronnie's video afterwards. Just, that's the show. Yeah. Just before we do that. Oh, that's not the show. <gasps> no. We've forgotten something, Twigs. We, we did. It's have competition, competition time. time. Oh, I've got Oh. oh, my apologies. God damn it. <laughs> oh, nailed the ending as well. Then. I know, it was so beautiful. I know, such a natural ending. But uh, very quickly, competition time. Uh, the other day we posted up on our Facebook page uh, the competition where you can win a limited edition 4-in-1 uh, gaming set. Uh, so get on Facebook, uh, take a look. The question is, on episode 7 with Russ Rogers, what was the make of the guest bread? The so brand? The brand, okay, yeah. Okay, cool. The bread brand. Uh, what was the uh, oh. what was the bread brand as the guest host on uh, episode seven? With Is that brown Rogers? bread brand or? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, get on uh, Facebook, Very comment, funny. like, and share, uh, and also go to youtube.com forward slash the toast train. Uh, cool. There we go. That's it. Cheers, Ty. Lovely. Well See done. you later. <laughs>
Namaste, my son. One day this will all be yours. A father reassures. I give you peace as it's the least that I might do for you. That I might do for you. As you discern the truth between the lines, there's a joy that you will find. If you say, say Namaste and shine. You bring from her what you deserve. From barren land you grow land you and reap what you sow. And if it's not in God's plans, but you gave it a chance, you gave the best of you, you gave the best of in the hope that she would too. And when it goes right, there's a joy that you will find. If you say, say I'm a stay. Hi friends, Ronnie Buckingham here, and I'm about to take you on a Spirit Walk too. Now for all of you that watched the first uh, and participated in the first Spirit Walk, thank you very much for the, the kind feedback, it went down well. Um, I'm going to go through the mechanics of it all, again, for those that haven't seen it before, or a refresher for those that have seen it before. Now first of all, what I've got to stress is that you need to listen to my voice and do and feel what I say. So if I say feel the breeze on your face or something under your hand, something under your feet, I really, really need you to feel that. Now, the conscious mind will always uh, kick in sometimes through meditations. And this is a, a very light meditation, but with a difference. And um, the conscious mind will be the one that tells you, oh, the husband's coming home from work or the kids need feeding or there's something to do. Now, what you've got to do is put all that aside and you've got to imagine completely imagine that this day is absolutely free now there's nothing wrong at all with this day you feel great in yourself the kids are being well looked after husband being well looked after everything is good you've got no job to go to no housework to do this is totally totally your day and i'm going to take you on this beautiful beautiful journey listen to what i say follow what i say now the first thing we need to do is find somewhere nice and quiet and we can sit lay Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Now, the first thing I want you to do is take a few really, really deep breaths. Maybe just shake your hands a little bit, that sort of thing. Loosen the body up. Be relaxed. This is your day. You have nothing to worry about. Everything is cool. Now, just lay. Close your eyes. Listen to what I've got to say and feel it. And feel it. So, 
We're starting now, and in your mind, I want you to be in a lovely guest house right by the coast. And as you look out the window of your guest house, the sea, the beach, is directly opposite. You get up of the morning feeling wonderful. That's it, you feel fantastic. You go and have a nice shower, nice bath, dress lightly. It's very, very warm out there. Just a pair of shorts, loose top, whatever makes you feel comfortable. You don't need shoes and socks. You want to feel that sand between your toes later on. So we slip down to the front door. There's no one about. No one about. Everything's quiet. Down. Now, down the first few steps onto the pavement. And I want you to feel that pavement under your feet. It's nice and warm. It's quite early, but there's no soul about because it's your day. That's all you need to remember. This is your day. Now, we look left and right just to make sure, but everything's cool. Everything's cool. We cross the road onto the next pavement. And in front of you, there's the seawall. I want you to just put your hands on the seawall to look over the sea wall at the sea and take in the sights and sounds. Just give that a second or two doing that. Big, big breaths of fresh air, that lovely, salty, fresh air that you can taste. It goes right to the stomach. Now, I want you to turn to your left, 20 paces, feel that pavement, nice and warm, not hurting your feet, it just feels lovely. Just feels lovely, nice and calm. There's a little turn into your right there, and that is the entrance to the stairs that go down to the beach got a metal rail to the side of it I want you to grasp the metal rail just slightly it's only going to just save your balance that's all it is and I want you to walk down these steps now some of these steps have got a little bit of sand on them but they're quite safe and you just get that buzz it's almost like a very very fine sandpaper beneath your feet as you go down about a dozen steps down we go down we go and onto the sand and we just start walking looking about there's not a soul around now this sand's very, very golden, it's very, very soft. And it really gets under your feet. You can feel it go between your toes. But the strange thing is, it doesn't seem to hold you down. You seem to, although you can feel it, you're sort of floating across it, if that makes sense to you. It's a wonderful, wonderful feeling. And I just want you to walk. Big breaths, smells, take the air in. Seagulls, the sea, you're listening to that. It's quite lovely, but not another soul around. Now... As you walk on, again, keep feeling this sand under your feet, just nice and calm. And you start to remember childhood holidays with loved ones. You go back to remembering building sandcastles, having them kicked over by your brother or your sister, or maybe strangers, I don't know. But rebuilding them, getting them just right. Then you dig a little moat around that sandcastle, a little bucket and spade, and you're running down to the sea to get bucketfuls of water to come back and fill the moat up. Oh, it disappears, we're back to the sea again. And it just brings back wonderful mum, wonderful memories of, of being a child and being there with your brothers and sisters, or just brothers or just sisters, but with loved ones. The smells are familiar, the sights are familiar. I know that excitement you have when you were kids and you're free and there's no troubles in the world. Well, that's how it is for you today. You haven't got any troubles. Everything's smooth. That's the way it is. Now, I just want you to keep walking along this sand now, as you're walking along, you can the tide's coming in very gently, and you can just hear it lapping onto the sand. And you look across, and you decide you're going to walk onto the sand that's a little bit more compact, where the, the waters run onto it. And that's the way you go. And you go off, and now you're walking on that slightly more solid sand. And you start to feel like a child again, in truth, just like a, a little boy or a little girl. And you start to dig the heel in when you walk, and then... Just roll it over so it's coming onto your toes. And there's that little bit of muddy sand just clinging between the toes. But it, it feels wonderful. Now as you're walking along, you start looking at your, your footprints in the sand. And something very young and daft in your mind tells you to spin round and walk backwards slightly. So you're walking backwards and you're looking at where you've been. But you're going in the opposite direction. So just do that for a little while, walking in the sand. I don't think you're digging in with your heel, rolling that foot forward and onto your toes. So it's making quite weird, weird footprints. Then turning around, walking backwards. I don't know if you intend to confuse people that you've been walking both ways, but it's, you find it funny, and, and that's lovely. You're still feeling very, very light, very, very happy. Just a beautiful, beautiful day, and you're having fun, and you feel safe, and you feel secure. Now, as you look down, you notice that your feet, some of this wet sand on there, a little bit, ah, you know the way it is, but it's comfortable, but... You being you, you're going to go down into the into the sea. Only gently let the, the waves lap across your feet and just wash that away. 
Now that's what you're doing. You're walking along, and again, you're feeling very mischievous today, like a like a young child, as if you're a youngster again. And you go in that little bit deeper, sort of up to the ankles, and you start kicking your feet out, kicking the spray up into the air. Some of it blows back into your face. And I want you to feel that, that gentle sea breeze and that little few drops of seawater that just come back and uh, run down in front of you and, and uh, on your face. And you just carry that up, just carry on, then back onto the solid sand. You're having a great day, just walking on and walking on, listening to the seagulls. Now you're looking up towards over the seawall back, but there's no, not a soul about, not a soul about. The strange thing is, you can remember smells from years ago, maybe candy floss or hot dogs or some chips, but they're all lovely, lovely memories. And you just breathe all that in and your mind just rolls back and rolls back and rolls back. It's a lovely, lovely warm day. And I want you to feel the sun just gently on you, on, the, on your head, top of your head. You're not gonna burn, it's not that sort of hot, but it's just wonderful. Now, as you're walking along, you notice it in front of you coming up, there's one of the wooden breakers, the, the wave breakers there, that goes from the far side of the beach right down into the water's edge. You don't feel like climbing over it, so you're going to walk around it, which means you're just going to go a little deeper into the water, but maybe just up to the knees, just up to the knees. And round you go. Feel that water gets a little bit colder, but nothing to worry about, that little bit colder. You actually quite like it, so there you are plodding on through this... Uh, slightly deeper water again kicking your feet up you go on for a little while then decide just to move on back to the the solid sand again and you notice as you look down obviously seashells are there and i want you to bend down and pick up some of these seashells feel the texture in your hands then you find one and you put it to your ear so you can hear that hiss that beautiful hiss as we used to do of the sea don't really need it because you're hearing the waves and the gulls and all the other beautiful noises that we associate with that just keep walking along, walking along, just enjoying it, just strolling. You don't feel fatigued at all. It seems as if you're floating. In fact, you look down and you wonder why your um, footprints aren't as heavy as they should be. They're very, very slight indentations. And it makes you smile because you just feel so light and so at ease. Breathing nicely, breathing nicely. This really is a beautiful day for you. And it's so tranquil. No worries, no worries in the world. You're completely carefree. And as we go along, there's yet another wave breaker. And we decide this time we're going to climb over it, but at the very shortest point. Now, as you get up to it, there's that green sort of seaweedy slime that's on it. But it doesn't feel bad, but feel it under your hands. And it brings back memories of maybe rock pools when you were a kid and trying to catch crabs and things like that. And this same green algae that we get on your, on your fingers and hands. You feel like a kid. This is what it's all about. You feel like a child again. And I want you to just hold on to it, put your one leg over, then the other leg, push off from that. Now you're back into the softer sand again. And this is the amazing thing. You seem to be skimming over it, just skimming over it, like you're floating. But it's a lovely feeling. It doesn't put you into panic or anything like that. You don't really think about it. You just notice it. And you are just floating, just gently gently going across this sand there are the slightest slightly footprints slightest footprints but they're nowhere as deep as they should be now as you're walking along this is one deserted beach but in the distance far off you can see some people sitting by the sea wall doesn't bother you but there's something there that makes you think i've been here before and even though you're several hundred yards away from this group of people there's something about them that draws you to them and makes you feel, I know them. I know them very, very well. I'm not sure who they are, but I know them. And you get closer, and you get closer, and it's drifting, you're just drifting. It's a beautiful sensation. And you find that you're drifting more and more towards these people. It's almost automatic, as if you're not aware of doing it, it's just happening. So you're being guided. And you're getting quite close now to these people. So you're getting very close now. Some of these people are starting to stand and you're beginning to recognise people now. People that you thought you'd never see again. Maybe they thought they'd never see you again. But now they're standing. They're all starting to rise. Dusting sand down from their dresses and trousers. And their arms are opening and they're, they're just beckoning you forward into an embrace. And I'm going to take you right up and into that embrace. There's tears of joy running down their faces and smiles from ear to ear. It's 
the most wonderful, wonderful feeling. And you realise these are your loved ones. These are your loved ones. And I'm taking you nearer, nearer, nearer to these loved ones. And I'm going to leave you in the embrace because this is your time, not mine. This is your time. And I'm going to leave you within that love and within that embrace. And I'm going to leave you there to enjoy this and catch up with people that you thought you may never see again. God bless you. I'll come back for you in a little while. Enjoy your day.
Okay, so I'm going to start to bring you back. This is the time to say your goodbyes and you'll see them again sort of times because you know you will. This is never goodbye. There's always I'll see you later. I hope this has been a wonderful experience for you. Now, you're having to pull away from grafts and cuddles and endearments and you're still uttering them endearments as you leave. They may even walk, decide to walk a little bit up the beach with you. Just slowly, slowly, holding hands. Their hands are slipping away. And you're just moving away, back the way you came. Stopping to look over your shoulder. They're still there, waving away to you, waving away. They look so happy and relaxed. They look young again, much younger than you remember them. And they're happy. They're very happy. And to have seen you is really the icing on the cake. So now we're going back onto the more compact sand. Picking up some more seashells and memories. Going back towards the wave breakers. You decide you're going to walk around that one. You're going to climb over it anymore. You're feeling a little bit tired now. But not tired in the sense of heavy tired. Just emotionally tired. Because it has been some trip for you. And just walking out into the water. It's got that a little bit deeper now. So maybe just over the knees. But... On such a hot day like this and after all what you've seen and all what you've been through, it's a lovely, lovely feeling. It just cools the whole body down and you feel amazing. There's no regrets because there's no goodbyes. It's just your day and it continues to be your day. Your memories will be made of this with lots and lots of memories to come. So head back now, head back, back onto the hard sand, just on the water's edge. The water's still just lapping over your feet very, very gently. You feel wonderful still. You've still got the whole day in front of you. And we're going back and back. And round the second sea break, moving up into the soft sand, moving along the soft sand. You've noticed now that after the experience of meeting your loved ones, that your footprints are that little bit deeper, that little bit deeper. But it's not heavy, it's not heavy again, you're fine. And you're not tired, there's no pain. You're not out of breath. It's just amazing for you. And now we're coming up to the steps. We're coming up to the steps. And I want you to mount those steps and start your way up those steps. Half a dozen, dozen steps. Just keep going up, keep going up. Now don't forget you're barefoot. And when you get to the top, I want you to just put one hand on the wall, raise one leg, and with your hand, just dust the sand off. Just dust the sand off. Then the same with the other foot back out onto the pavement back along stopping opposite the guest house where this journey first started taking it back across the road looking each way that's you back into the guest house back up the steps in the door into the guest house there's still not a soul about and you just feel that you've got to go and have a lay down so I want you to go back up to the bedroom up the steps you can feel the carpet under your feet this time and the banister to the right. Keep feeling, keep feeling. You're feeling wonderful. You've still got so much time on your hands because this is still your day. And I just want you to go up, get to your bed, lay down, close your eyes and just think about the experience you just had. And know that there is no death, there's no permanent goodbyes, there's just eternal love, eternal life joy to be have and you have and you will see your loved ones again i hope you've enjoyed this journey god bless you stay safe and stay well now if by chance this didn't work for you please give it another go just keep going until it, it does work and work it will thanks for listening god bless you once again ronnie buckingham
from the Toast Train Show. Oh, lovely cup of tea. Thank you.